welcome back to my channel my name is wolo i create videos from winnipeg manitoba i call it winterpeg because winterpeg is super chilly super cold compared to other provinces by now people in alberta and toronto are already wearing um, normal spring jackets but we are still wearing winter jacket because the weather has been fluctuating anyway maybe i'll start dancing in my video so that people will just take me serious don't mind me i just like to be excited um at the beginning of the new week uh because a lot of things are happening some subscribers got job offers some actually got their itas and all that i share videos about immigrating to canada life in canada and something general that will be useful to people who plan to immigrate to canada so shout out to all my day one subscribers who have been with me on this journey and are still watching every of my videos thank you so much for your support has sustained me i also want to say a very big thank you to um, one subscriber that bought coffee for me thank you so much i really appreciate the coffee it's giving me more energy <laughs> anyway yeah so today's video is generally um going to be about immigration and it's going to be about the atlantic immigration pilot project but before i talk about that i actually want to give a summary of what is actually happening um presently because the trends are changing and um it's now getting difficult for people to actually come in through the normal express entry because of the requirements and the comprehensive ranking score draw scores keep increasing every draw they have every month and it's looking like it's going to be very difficult uh, especially for people with certain age brackets so for people who are above 35 years and do not really have a master's degree or a second um, diploma or a certificate and do not have very good scores in IELTS it's going to be very difficult to come in through the express entry except they like go and get an additional qualification and improve the on their IELTS score and get the highest band and also maybe start learning French so it's in that situation that one can really confidently say the person can actually go through the normal express entry pathway without looking for provincial nomination but of course you know with provincial nominations you have to start searching for your occupations in different provinces and whether they are in demand in different provinces you have to do the search yourself for saskatchewan they have a list of occupations that are excluded and they have a stringent requirement that your occupation must match your educational qualification so if you are an accountant you must have a bachelor's degree or a diploma in accounting and you cannot claim to be an accountant and have a bachelor's degree in let's say economics it will not work in case of saskatchewan and then for manitoba yes manitoba has actually uh, been focusing on only strategic recruitment initiative and they have paused the option for family support. So for people asking me, you want people to support your application, please, I can't do that. I don't know people who can do that for you. But the thing is, Manitoba has paused support for family applications since July 2019. And since then, people who have family members who are in Manitoba have not been able to support their family members applications since July 2019 and we don't know when it's going to end they've been focusing on strategic recruitment initiative so that is for Manitoba for Alberta they have their own occupation in demand streams and they just randomly go into the express entry pool and give people provincial nominations based on their comprehensive ranking score so the minimum requirement for Alberta is like 300 but the truth is if you have a 300 and your occupation is not in demand or in high demand you might not likely get a nomination from alberta so you should be targeting as much as 400 and some of the occupations that they have actually been giving nominations to are actually sales representatives administrative assistants and some other occupations like that that they gave um, provincial nominations to in their express entry profile so if you are uh, an administrative assistant 
uh, try and ensure that your comprehensive ranking score is above 400 at least to get a nomination from Alberta. And Alberta is not so strict about you having a certificate in what you study, so it's not like Saskatchewan. Now, for Ontario, Ontario has the um, human capital pathway, they also have the tech draws, and recently they just opened a window for people who had um, employment, and I think for students, people who just graduated from um, Ontario, they did that. So it's a short time frame for people to just quickly submit the application, and it was short after that. So for Ontario, there are specific occupations that are in demand for their tech draws, like software developers and some other occupations like that. The knock is there. If you go to the Ontario um, Immigration Nomination Program page, you will see the knock um, specified for the tech draws. Then for the human capital pathway, they also have occupations that they want. The occupations are accounting, I think there's human resources as well, and some other professions like that that they need. But the requirement is to have a minimum comprehensive ranking score in your express entry profile of about 468 and above. So if your comprehensive ranking score is not like 468, you might not likely get a provincial nomination from Ontario. So that's the requirement for Ontario. For British Columbia, of course, you know, you have to search for a job. They favor people who are already living in BC. So it's kind of a no-go area. Now, what is left is the Atlantic provinces, and that's um, New Brunswick, Newfoundland, and Labrador, Nova Scotia, and Prince Edward Island. Now, these four provinces, they have their own specific provincial nomination program. They also have AIPP. And I'll be talking about AIPP uh, because it's um, a very good program and has the lowest proof of funds requirements and lowest criteria for IELTS and all that. The only requirement for um, AIPP is a job search. You have to search for a job in that province. Now for AIPP, it was established in 2017 and in 2019, they decided to extend the pilot by two years, meaning by December 2021, the pilot is going to expire. And there are some quick facts about AIPP. Um, as of February 2019, there were 1,896 designated AIPP employers. And AIPP designated employers made over 3,729 job offers to skilled workers or international graduates. And so far, there are 2,535 permanent residents that came under AIPP. Now with AIPP, they have two approach. One for graduates that finished from universities in those provinces, and the second is for skilled foreign workers who have the necessary skills that they need in their provinces. And if you go to each of these individual websites, you'll find the list of designated employers and you can actually send your applications to them or go to Indeed, search for jobs that are available and apply to these people. But the truth is, there are certain occupations that they do not want in those provinces and if you are an accountant you are sending a resume to any of these aipp provinces you are wasting your time um, for new brunswick they have selected occupations that they are looking for and i posted that um, selected occupation list on the canada info hub instagram page you can go take a look at it and then for nova scotia for prince edward island and for newfoundland and labrador they also have their own designated um, list, which they need certain occupations. So not all occupations are really needed in those provinces. And if they are not needed and you're sending your resume or applying to those places, hoping that an employer is going to contact you, it's just a waste of time. And I have seen a situation where one subscriber actually um, paid a consultant for the AIPP process and the consultant just forwarded the list of designated employers to this particular person and told him to just do the job application himself. And unfortunately, his line of occupation or his experiences was not in any way related to the occupations that they are actually looking for in these provinces. So I'll give a typical example for a geophysicist. Um, if you are applying to any of the AIPP provinces, 
it's just a waste of time you you will not get any response from them for a business administrative person if you're applying to these places it's just a waste of time you will not get any response from them but there are people they are actually looking for and these people are actually nurses so if you are a nurse yes the aipp province will favor you better it will favor you if you are actually applying for jobs in those provinces because they are looking for nurses and they go as far as organizing recruitment events and information sessions like new brunswick and newfoundland and labrador and pei they usually go outside of canada to organize all these um, sessions information sessions career sessions um job recruitment event and all that and invite people to attend and then give them job offers so it's in that event they actually give people job offers but there are there are actually minor cases where people can actually apply from outside of Canada targeting those occupations and then they are getting job offers. Now you all know that as a registered nurse outside of Canada, you cannot work as a registered nurse in Canada. You have to write your licensing exams. You have to go through the whole process of maybe attending a bridging program and then before you're getting your license to practice in that province. So if you are a nurse outside of Canada, it is very, very unlikely for you to get a job as a nurse in Canada. It is not possible. Instead, what you should do is to look for a job that is related to your nursing career that does not require any form of licensing and apply for those jobs. So that's a tip I'm giving to somebody there. People are actually selling the names of employers that are employing people, which is very, very wrong because it's something that you can actually do by yourself. You can go to their website, you see the designated employers there, go on Indeed, search if they have any jobs, and if you find any job there that you feel is uh, related to your occupation, like I mentioned, the healthcare sector, nurses, then you can apply for something related to your occupation. Instead of buying contacts, I mean, it doesn't make any sense buying these things, especially when you don't know if you're going to even get a job. So the best thing you can do is to actually get a Canadian standard resume and a good cover letter that can sell your skills to the employer. Once you get a Canadian standard resume and a good cover letter, you can start applying to these occupations that are related to your career and then you'll be able to get the attention of the employer. So if you are interested in getting a Canadian standard resume, you can actually send me an email and I'll link you up with the HR professional that does review on resumes. I usually do once in a while. If I just look at it and say, and see that it's actually a Canadian standard resume, I'll reply you back and say it's a Canadian standard resume. But when it comes to cover letters, I don't have time for all those things. So I actually connect people to the HR professional. She works with a group of HR professionals who actually reviews resumes and you'll be able to apply to these areas, the AIPP provinces, especially if your profession is in the healthcare industry and if you are a nurse, you are likely to get a job offer. Another occupation that I know that they usually look for are people who are in the customer service uh, industry. So if you provide customer service or a call center agent, you can actually apply for jobs in the AIPP provinces. I will not be able to do a video on how you can do that, but if you are interested, um, in reviewing your resume, in making, making sure your resume is up to the Canadian standard that it will attract an employer to call you for an interview and give you a job offer, then it's better you send me an email. That's the information I actually want to share today and um, I hope it's something that's going to be beneficial to you out there. So thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video. Bye-bye.